Okay, we are being recorded. Um, so that way it'll be available for those who aren't able to um, attend live or want to review it again. Uh, having said that, I'm going to turn it over to John, or Dr. McKeeby. He's the lead faculty member for Data 670, and I have a couple of sections, as you know. So I'll let uh, Dr. McKeeby start, and I'll chime in with some specifics on occasion. Go ahead, Dr. McKeeby. Okay, and if people have questions, if you can relay them, Dr. Knode, because I am uh, have the full screen here of the share. So hopefully everybody sees. Do you see the front screen? We do. And go ahead, as I said, on questions, post them in the chat window. We'll get to them uh, when we finish this uh, relatively short presentation. So this is the capstone class. You're going to define a problem to solve or analyze. You're going to develop a project scope to analyze the problem. You're going to define the analytical approach. You're going to express the problem in statistical and machine learning techniques. You're going to use uh, predictive and descriptive modeling. You're going to just justify the selection of data sets. You're going to evaluate the results. You're going to evaluate the model. You're going to deploy, <coughs> deploy and refine the model, and you're going to assess your model performance in your project. We want you to utilize all the knowledge that you've gained through this program. You've taken a lot of classes about a different, many different things. You've used many different tools, and we want you to utilize all those tools. It's a one semester individual project. Pretend you are the lead of a data analytics team. You're going to select a problem, and then you're going to select the data sets. You're going to figure out what tools work best for all the pieces, right? The data collection, the data migration, uh, clean, cleaning the data, uh, visualizing the data, the modeling, predictive modeling. You're going to select the tools. We have a template for the deliverables. There's two parts, and you'll see that in a minute. And you are going to be a part of a peer group. And so you're going to select or you can identify people you would like to work with, uh, send that to us by Friday so we can set up the groups. And those are members of your company. So you present to them, they present to you. Uh, there's three presentations that you'll see, and it's kind of, you know, you should use each other to help improve your project. The peer review groups, like I said, it will be three to four people. Each member of the group will act as an advisor, and the use of groups allows members to learn about other people's projects, but also how they go about defining it, what techniques they use, why did they select those techniques. You should learn from each other. I mean, you've all been in this program. You've learned a lot of different ideas, but you also have outside knowledge and experience, and you should use them and use each other to grow more. Our expectations, it's a capstone class, and uh, for each credit hour, we're looking for three hours of work, and so that would be 18 hours for this class since it's a sixth credit class. And we're looking for a minimum of 12, but we're looking for that 18 uh, hour range. We want you to complete the projects at time. If you're late, then please email us, uh, ask us questions, help us understand. This is a hard class to do in the last two weeks, right? So there is presentations along the way to your peers, and if you miss those points, it's really hard to catch up. If you select an idea, and we'll talk about that in a minute, you can change ideas, and that's okay. But there is a time where you can't change and you just need to do the work. Uh, Dr. Kinode, so here's the, one of your projects. Yeah, uh, if you've had a chance to look at the uh, uh, course uh, layout, uh, under project options, you'll see several options laid out. There's, there's the option of using information and material from your organization. I've already heard from at least two students who intend to do that use some information from their current organization and do a full up uh, project based on what their, uh, their organization needs. And so we tailor that accordingly. It might be something where there's more emphasis on 
uh, one aspect or another. If you can do something for your organization, if you can get permission to use the data, and you don't have to show it to the world, you can disguise it, but you do have to grade it. So we have to be able to see the information, and, and that, that's something you want to clear early on if you're going to th if you're thinking about doing that. So if your organization has a project that they wanted, they've always wondered why we couldn't afford to hire somebody to do it or something like that, you can become an internal consultant and do that project for them as long as it's related, of course, to analytics. And we can tailor the deliverables and the requirements accordingly. Uh, a second approach, of course, is to uh, use information or data sets from the real world uh, that are robust enough, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later. But let me move to the third uh, option, we sometimes get special projects. Dr. McKeeby sometimes gets special projects from NASA and from AIR, the American Institutes for Research, a couple of organizations that we're connected with. They say, hey, we've got some projects that we'd like done, and if you've got students who'd like to work on them, that, let's work it out. Uh, this semester, we do have at least two special projects already in the hopper. Uh, these are for volunteers. We don't, we don't draft anybody to do these. If you have an interest in either one of them, you need to clear it with either Dr. McKeeby or myself. For the two on the slide, and this one and the next one, <clears throat> you would want to go through me because we want to make sure that you're really interested. We want to make sure you have the requisite skills, et cetera. So let me just, if you haven't read it yet, let me just describe these briefly. One is from NASA. It's the Eclipse Data Project. As we all know, last August, August 2017, we all witnessed a massive solar eclipse, uh, which was catalog, photograph, documented throughout the country. And of course, NASA was in charge of that. And guess what they collected? A lot of data, a lot of data. And guess what they'd like to do with that? They'd like to know if there's anything interesting in it. Now, most of our projects, <clears throat> you have to go through a soup to nuts, you know, lay out a specific objective, then go into, um, you know, building your, your data set, refining your data set, cleansing it, the things that Dr. McKeeby just covered. For this one, of course, you would be working with both the professor and with the NASA point of contact to do more along the lines of what they think they would find of value, and that's what's highlighted on this slide. Uh, they collected a lot of information, and you can see some of the questions they're interested in. Uh, how does the citizen data science compare to other, is it, other data sources? Uh, is there a difference in reporting occurring? So you're looking for either anomalies, you're looking for correlations. Basically, what you're doing with this project is a large data exploration project. So if you love data exploration and are not so much interested in, in data modeling or predictive modeling, this might suit your fancy because this one is mostly a data exploration project. We would expect that if you do take this on, you would make heavy use of, of course, data visualization tools and techniques. The data are out there along with instructions as to how to get it, and we have a point of contact at NASA uh, who's in charge of the data who would work with you hand in hand to help you with this. And of course, this would look really nice on your resume to say you did the following project for NASA. You'd get a lot of credit. Obviously, UMUC would get some credit too because we like being able to uh, you know, talk about our relationships with uh, outside agencies and government agencies. So um, there are other questions that could be formulated once you get into this data, but I won't say too much more about it right now. Just think about it. If you say, wow, this looks like an interesting project, you'll need to get in touch with me, and, and we'll talk about it more, okay? The second one is, um, go ahead and put the second one. Oh, here it is. Um, it's, uh, uh, I didn't change the title. I'm sorry about that. Okay. That's okay. The second one is not, not another NASA project. Uh, the Institute for Ops Research and Management Science, that's what INFORM stands for. It's an institute that I belong to for many years, probably over 20 years, uh, has a, an outreach arm to it, a pro bono outreach arm. And they came to us and said, we have a project that we don't have anyone capable or, or wanting to do, really. Uh, it's not necessarily capable. And it's, it's called Let's Go Boys and Girls. This is an organization working to help break the cycle of, of poverty through STEM. They're not asking you to do that. That's a pretty massive undertaking. But they are asking if you have a volunteer who'd like to help them uh, build a better database. They have a database. They've collected information for several years. They would like to turn that into a reasonable-sized database and then, again, explore some of the interesting aspects of that. 
so we'd like to help them out if we have someone in the class, either in any of the sections, any of the three sections. You don't have to be in my section to do this. I, I would be the mentor, but we also have a point of contact there to work with them from INFORMS uh, and from Let's Go Boys and Girls. And so they have a lot of data they've collected of how students have done in terms of that, improving their academic performance based on what they've done in STEM. And what they'd like to do is employ predictive analytics uh, to see if they can identify strategy for leveraging or migrating trends. In other words, what are the key variables that really predict someone progressing out of poverty based on their STEM experience? So if this interests you, again, we have the data. We have the point of contact who's willing to answer any question you have about the data or the project or help you formulate other questions. And you have me acting as sort of an intermediary. And those would be special projects that, again, are available to volunteers. If you're interested in that, uh, certainly you want to contact me. Let me know your interest. And if we have a lot of volunteers, we'll, we'll pick the best qualified. Uh, so just pointing those out early on in the co in the uh, session because we you know as the, one of the key sticking points that we'll come back to a little bit with uh, Dr. McKeeby is we've got to get people sort of picking their project within the first two or three weeks. Now, as he said, you can change it later on, but we want to make sure we have people assigned to specific projects early on and working on that. So I've said enough about that. I have more information on each of these projects. So if you're interested, email me as uh, steve.canode at umuc.edu, or you can email Dr. McKeeby and he'll send it to me if you're interested, and we'll go from there and sort this out. Okay, I'll turn it back over to Dr. McKeeby to continue what we were talking, what he's talking about before. So <clears throat> we've had projects with NASA in there as well. Um, at NASA, the data is all public domain data. Um, and for AIR, it's actual research. Um, it's actual projects that they have customers for. And so I'm still trying to get a response. I mentioned that at the beginning of this. Is Usually, um, I started two weeks ago, three weeks ago, uh, and people have changed at both institutions that I've worked with. So I'm still trying to find the main contact. And as soon as I do, I will post it and also provide it to uh, Dr. Kinode and to make sure you know what's available, but I'm still trying to get our contacts because uh, people change positions and it just wasn't clear that happened. So, so we talked about special projects using real data. Uh, big key is obtaining permission. I had a student get all the way to week eight and then uh, showed the lawyers at their organ at her organization. And they said, well, you can't show the data. And I said, well, I don't need to see the data, but I need to see some idea of outcome. And, uh, and then I said, we won't post it to anybody else, but they still uh, weren't uh, agreeing to it. So if you're going to use your organization's data, make sure with your supervisor, but also if there's any lawyers. Uh, their, her case was it was proprietary information, and they were afraid. Uh, we also had people, I work for the government, um, st other students probably work for the government. Um, you do need to go through whatever the process your agency has. And so the general project is we want you to ensure you have a robust data set. Um, there's going to be some discussion about the size of the data set. Um, you're going to cleanse and prepare the data, explore the data, uh, determine visualizations. Um, we have key requirements um, for the data set. We want you to use multiple data sets, minimum of two. Uh, we want you to have 2,000 instances at least. We want you to have 15 variables at least. Um, the biggest key is finding another data set. So if you go to any of the resources that we posted under uh, the project discussions, you got to make sure there's a way to include some other data set. And so when we say data set, if you use uh, a database that has five tables, that's one data set. That's that data set. So it's not a table driven, it's an actual other data set. 
Uh, you will provide insightful visualizations. We want multiple predictive models, and we want you to present the results. Along the way, we have assignments. And so if you go under the discussions, it's been laid out to discussions for each one of these assignments, and it identifies what's required. And so the first week is going to be a, or assignment one, due week two, and they're due Sunday at midnight. Um, we're looking for a project scope, and it's a one-page project scope. Uh, week four, we want to know the data sets in more detail. Week um, seven, we want to know about the data preparation. Uh, week eight, we want to understand the data. Week 10, we want to see your analysis. Week 12, we want a final report. So we will have a template with all the different sections so it's clear what's required. Uh, and that will be posted out there. We have rubrics, and mine are posted out there. I'm pretty sure Dr. Kinode's are posted out there as well. So for each of these assignments, there is a rubric. <coughs> I mentioned at the beginning, we have three presentations. Week five, you're going to present to your group. Uh, it should be about 20 minutes. Um, you can do it in multiple ways. You can do it asynchronous, you can do a WebEx session or any tool that you all have access to um, and do it at the same time and discuss and provide your summary, right? Provide your presentation or a link to the presentation uh, in the assignment folder, but also your critique of each other. Or you can, you know, come up with your presentation, whatever tool you want to use, mail it to each other, each of you read it um, you know, separately whenever you have time, and then uh, send each other comments or set up a time where you can at least discuss it and then post that. So you don't have to do it in a session where you all get to meet, but you as a team should make that decision. Week eight is class presentation, so I have try to get, and I've been very lucky that get around 80% of my students to present seven minutes, five minutes for slides, and then two minutes for questions. And there's a list of slides. You'll sign up for a time and then present. And then week 11, again, it's with your group. So it's a presentation of where your final presentation of what you found, what you learned, um, there's a rubric that will identify what's required. There are discussions, week one and two, three and four, six and seven, eight and nine, ten and eleven. Since week five is your presentations, week 12 is the final. There's no discussions, no grade. To date, we've had, I think, ten complete semesters because I forgot to add one. Uh, we've had seven students work with NASA, five with AIR. They actually hired a student uh, from a project, so that's pretty cool. Um, we have found that not all students like the idea of trying to find your own data sets and defining your own project, and that is the hardest part, is finding the right project and right data set. Not all students are versed in all tools, and we have a TA and utilize the TA for, for those items. We do find that all students want to be in this class and want to and get a lot out of it and want to be data analysts and want to be data scientists. So uh, we're very um, fortunate. Discussion rubric, in my class I posted it. Um, and so I'm looking for the detail across post, timely post, I'm looking for a specific number, at least three, and I'm looking for that, you know, there's good grammar and spelling and you follow APA format for any headers and formatting you use, but really for the citations and the references. For the assignment one, I have a project scope document. It's similar to uh, a Six Sigma approach. Um, 
and just putting everything on one page. Now, I know it ends up being more than one page, but we're looking for something you know, very concise and show that you've been thinking about the project, you have a concept, but it's not all defined yet, right? But you have some of the major framework items um, so we know that you're moving along and you're doing the research. And so that's what we're looking for. And then there'll be template for all the other uh, assignments. And so uh, we're going through them to make sure all the different items match the rubric. And so that's, I'll finish that this week and then make sure those, that template is out there. Um, many things are under the discussions. And so if you look at the discussions, you can see that it's laid out per week, so you know what's due. Um, and we are both posting different re references and links and information under them so you have the information to complete the assignments well. Then there's also the discussions, um, and so they're out there as well. Um, so, Dr. Kinode, what did I miss? I don't think you missed anything, John, but let me just uh, amplify a little bit. Um, we, don't, we don't present new information per se in this course, as, as I think Dr. McKeeby alluded to. So, you know, it's basically, he and I are basically monitoring your status and helping you along and making sure you stay on track. Now, that doesn't mean we can't review things. For example, you still should have access to all software that was used throughout the program. That's the deal we have with all the vendors. Uh, so all the software, whether it's something from 610, Decisions First, so Watson Analytics, uh, Python, R, SAS Enterprise Miner, Hadoop, et cetera, et cetera, they all are available to you. So if you have trouble with that, we'll make sure you get connected to the person that can uh, fix that for you. So that's one thing. Second thing is this is a very, um, as I said, important course where you stay on track. You can see the many, many, many deliverables. Uh, if you stay on track, you will be successful. And of course, our goal, since this is the capstone course, all of you have been successful thus far. We expect everyone to succeed quite nicely in the course. The only thing that could happen, again, is falling behind or not addressing the tasks and so forth and so on. And, and so don't let that happen. As I mentioned earlier, if you pick one of the special, or if you volunteer and are chosen for one of the special projects, you're your, your grading and deliverables will all be slightly different because we'll tailor that much more to the, uh, what, the, what the client basically would like to have. Now, if you have been keeping track, as I, I warn all students when they start the program in 610, if you've been keeping track of all of your competency-based assignments, you should have a pretty rich portfolio uh, by now that you could use either going for promotion or career interviews or changing jobs or whatever. This should be the capstone. This should be something where you can say, listen, I went soup to nuts on this thing. I defined a problem. I found data sets that give me the data I need to solve the problem. I went through and cleansed, prepared, and organized the data. I created insightful and interesting visualizations to show what's in the data. I created many predictive models to predict the thing I was trying to do in my outline from the model. I interpreted the results. I made specific and insightful recommendations and conclusions, et cetera. So this should be the capstone that you can put in your portfolio of projects. So our job is to keep you on track and to help whenever there, there's some, any confusion. And that's why we have such uh, what uh, we've created very detailed deliverables. We've created very detailed rubrics for grading the deliverables. So you've got to stay on track. Uh, as far as the discussions go, there are quite a few discussions. You saw five listed in groups of two, two weeks. Uh, people think, well, I, the discussions are just a waste of time. They're not. You know, just like you have a small group of three or at most four that you exchange your presentations with, the discussions are a very useful way to let the rest of the class know what you're working on, get help, get insights, get assistance from the rest of the class. You know, you all have the big advantage of, as Dr. McKeeby uh, said, being in the real world where you have real deadlines, real projects, real things you have to do. Uh, and it's easy for us as academics, or at least for me as an academic, to say, oh, well, you know, why didn't you do it thusly? And you say, well, here's why. Well, that's the kind of stuff that shows up well in the discussions. 
what are you working on, how is it coming, what are you doing, and if you post those, since everybody can see the discussions, hopefully your feedback to your fellow classmates will be uh, useful. Hints, tips, oh, we tried that, Mary, and it, here's, what, here's a better idea, or here's another reading, or here's a... So use the discussions in a richer way than, than you would think. Uh, they're not there just to fill a square. We do think they provide some interactivity. They make sure you're contributing. We know that at least you checked in a couple of times during the week to post some discussions, so that gives us some good feel that you're still around. And then when we see the assignments come in, we know that things are going well. If you have any problems, you need to let us know right away. And so with, uh, with the special projects, of course, we handle those a little differently. We did have some very interesting ones last semester and I thought well every all of them have gone very well the special ones and we had some people do some very interesting other projects uh, one a couple of students tried deep learning which is something we added to our curriculum in uh, two semesters ago a very involved process uh, one student tried cognitive computing ie she uh, or he built a chatbot for his organization uh, and that was uh, quite an undertaking so, you know, there are things you can do. We're looking for you to sort of think about what it is you really think would be a useful endeavor for you this semester so that you can prove your mettle. You can say, I have been through this program. I understand the world of analytics. Maybe I haven't mastered every single thing thus far, but I've certainly been exposed to a lot of things. I know how to do visualizations. I know how to cleanse data. I know how to find data sets. I know how to build predictive models. I know how to tell the story. You've heard that term from me many times, tell the story, because that final report has got to be that. Uh, as you go along and add pieces to it, you'll get feedback on those pieces as to where they could be improved and so forth, and that's the job of Dr. McKeeby and I. But that final project should tell the story. It should say, here was the problem. Here's what I did about it. Here's what it means. Here's, the, here's what the outcomes were. Here's what it means. Here's what I recommend. So. So it's a full up test of uh, your ability to do a analytics project from start to finish. Uh, with that, I've had my two cents worth. I think we're ready to answer questions. I tried to answer one. A student asked what data set they were already using at INFORMS for that project. And I, my response went to everybody. So some of you may be wondering what I was talking about. Uh, the um, Let's Go Boys and Girls People, the, the INFORMS one, are using a, something called Airtables. I'm not familiar with that. They are open and interested in having a different data set. They'd like to have someone help them build a data set, uh, a database, uh, actually. Okay. Um, thanks for everyone else. My question was, oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, thank Nicholas. <laughs> I responded to everybody. Have you had chatbot components in projects in the past? Well, just the one. Uh, now, let me say that one didn't go near as well as we had hoped. Uh, and only because um, the student uh, tried to be too broad. Uh, I, I was a CTO, Chief Technical Officer, for a, a, a chatbot company 10 years ago. And it was hard because the chatbots couldn't maintain any sense of context. Uh, the first question might be, you know, uh, how much does it cost to go to the University of Maryland, University College? And you could give them an answer, and then they, later on they'd say, what was that cost again? And the chatbots said, I don't know what you're talking about, which wouldn't make any sense. So the student who took this on found out just how difficult it is. I know that many of you, well, all of you, I guess, who've been through 650 uh, took a shot at uh, building chatbots using the IBM software, Assist. Uh, I certainly don't want to discourage anybody from taking that on. I do think it requires a tremendous effort to scope the project to be appropriate. And uh, since this was the first time uh, either the student or I had really tried this, uh, he ended up building one that was not really related to anything to do with his company, which I don't think is really the, the best idea. If you say I can build something related to an aspect of something my company would at least look at and say, oh, that was really close to what we'd like to have, that's fine. Uh, but to build one that knows all about uh, Hurricane Florence or uh, movies or uh, whatever is probably you know, not appropriate for this kind of course. So that's a long answer. Uh, let me see. John, can you see these questions? I don't know if they might to everybody or not. Let's see. The next one is I have a question on multiple data sets. Okay, let me say a little something about multiple data sets. Um, the general guidance, for those of you doing the sort of the general approach that was outlined as one of the three options, 
if you're using a general approach, meaning general data, we would like to get have you to use at least two robust data sets. Now, the ideal thing would be some way to link those data sets, to combine them, you know, find a field or two that's common and, and make the data set richer and more robust. However, you may end up using one data set just to amplify certain aspects of what you find in the other data set. Maybe it's, maybe, maybe it's you know, if it's diabetes, maybe you have one diabetes data set that, that deals with diabetes and another one that deals with something related to diabetes, but can still embellish and amplify that. That would be okay. If you are using a data set from your organization, I am open, I don't know about Dr. McKee, I'm open to letting you use just one data set if it's robust and you're doing something for your organization, okay? Ideally two, but if it's robust enough, meaning lots of cases, it's a real world data set, there are adjustments we can make. The idea is we wanna make sure you're heavily involved with a rich data set or sets. So it depends a little bit. So those things can be discussed with your professor. Uh, I see the question about the multiple data sets, the oil and gas well production in Pennsylvania. That sounds like a very interesting thing. If you can get the data sets, um, then that would be great. Somebody else says they're interested in the STEM project. You need to send me an email. Uh, that's great. Um, uh, you post it in the chat room, but make sure you send me an email again. Somebody was a little late. What exactly will the AIR data set be on? We haven't received that yet, right, Dr. McKeeby? That is correct, but typically it's been education, and it's been looking at, you know, changes in reading programs and changing and adding kind of a head start type of situation. So it has been uh, education, but I'm still waiting on uh, the contact. Okay. So we have the two special projects for sure, and we may have more. Uh, we've got to get those in. If we're going to get more, we've got to get them in soon so we can make yep. them available to you so you can choose them within the first two or three weeks so that you can get started. But anyone's interested, again, send me an email, steve.canode at umuc.edu, or if you're, if you're in Dr. McKeeby's section and you want to send it to him, he can forward it to me. Uh, but I'll be the primary go-between on, on those two projects. We do have, as I said, a point of contact for each of them who knows all about the data and uh, has been uh, promised that they will answer any questions the student has who's working on the project uh, as quickly as they can. So you're not going to be just wondering, I wonder what they wanted here, or I wonder what this means. No, 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 we don't work that way. We said we have to have someone ready to respond very quickly when a student has a question because we can't afford to have a student have to wait uh, more than a day or so. So they, they're going to try to answer questions in the same way that the professors do within 24 hours. Uh, I think, again, the idea here is, again, stay on track. Uh, make this a really rich learning experience. The students have done so well in the past. The projects have been amazing. And for the very high part, uh, very high most part, extremely well done. In fact, students often go further than we would expect them to go, which is great. If you have something that's a little different than what we're proposing, you can bring it up and see if we will uh, accept that. Uh, we're open because, you know, who knows what, what kind of interesting idea. As I said, the first one to do the chatbot, I was said, eh, a little skeptical, but we gave it a shot. The first one to do the deep learning project was amazing last semester. That was a real-world project, by the way. He, had a, a, he was working on a contract at his company, and he did a, a deep learning image recognition on some radar data that was <laughs> extremely impressive. So, uh, you know, we're open to seeing interesting ideas. As I said, we've outlined sort of the norm in the, in the, in the classroom the three options for norm, you know, real world data from your organization, special project from one of the ones we've, out, we've outlined, and then the, the sort of the norm, which is to go get real world data sets from Kaggle or PML or other places and combine them and, and formulate a, a, a project and then take it from start to finish. So that's kind of the idea. And both Dr. McKeeby and I, having been through this now for what we've done together, John, about uh, five or six semesters, Oh uh, yeah, I think it's been five or six. Yep. We've seen a lot of different things, so we pretty much have a, a good feel now for what we can do to help keep you on track and help you improve your 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 project if it needs any adjustments. 
So we're pretty good at that, and that's kind of our main job. So there won't be new lecture material. It won't be like you're learning new material. You've got the material you're going to be using. As I said, uh, there's refreshers out there. For example, there are links to all of the um, SAS E minor videos that I've created to re remind you if you have trouble uh, getting your access to that, we can help you with that. And we have a TA to help you with in case you've forgotten something in uh, R or Tableau or Python or something. We have a TA that can help refresh you. So we're there to help you and make sure you're safely through this uh, excursion. Okay, with that, I'll see if there are any other questions. Oh, wait a minute. For those of us in Professor Cano's class, what is Dr. McKeeby's contact for volunteering for AIR? Um, you, you should email uh, Dr. McKeeby. It's uh, John dot McKeeby, M C K E E B Y, at umuc.edu. Or is it faculty.umuc.edu, John? I can't remember. Correct. Yep. It's faculty. Um, I think it's faculty. Yep. If you send it to me, if you're in my class, Canode's class, either one of my sections, send it to me. I will make sure Dr. McKeeby gets it right away. I'll send it to him and, and we'll go from there. Okay, what other questions? The main thing we're doing here tonight is make sure you understand what's expected of you in the course. And we want to make sure that any administrative questions or snags or, or ideas or concepts that, that are, seem confusing are clarified. You're going to have a lot of deliverables. You saw that there were five or six written deliverables, each of which is adding a piece to the overall paper. And there are at least three presentations and there are at least five discussion items. So there's a lot of stuff. Uh, but the reason for that is we know that if we don't have a lot of often and frequently occurring deliverables, people will, you know, get busy, life goes on, and all of a sudden they're behind, and then it's in danger of finishing the course. This is your capstone. This is your. Uh, this is all you need to do. Finish this well to graduate, get that MSDA, and move on to bigger and better things. There's still, at last count, somewhere around a million and a half jobs waiting for you. So uh, you want to have a nice portfolio, go out there and, um, and, and do your thing. Okay, other questions? Okay, well, remember, this is recorded. If, if you want to go back and revisit the bidding on any of the things, do you have anything else to add, John? Yeah, so in my class, I did post the streaming of the Week 8 presentations, and it's to give you ideas of what other people have done. So uh, for the last two semesters, when we had those sessions where students had the seven minutes to kind of identify what they've done, we've recorded them, and so I've posted the last two semesters out there for my class. Um, I also posted a list of data sets that I don't want to see again. <laughs> I've seen a lot about uh, lending. I've seen about uh, victims in Baltimore um, and you know, violent crimes, I've seen the same ones three or four times. And so I have a list of data sets that I'm hoping that you don't uh, do use because I've seen it and I don't think there's much more that you could add to it. There's just, and they're kind of complete in a sense of a project. So I, I'm looking for something different. There's a lot of references and resources of data sets on both uh, our sites. And so to give you a list of all the places you can start to look for data sets if you don't have uh, an option of one of the special projects. And so there is a lot of data sets out there, and we both have links to many of the places that have these big data sets. And so you can look around and see what ideas interest you. And you can use the examples from the week eight presentations to give you ideas is not to do that same project, but to think about that something that, you know, oh, that's the type of data set that I need to look for, or oh, I can link this to that. So it's to give you some ideas about the A project or what you can do uh, with this program. So uh, I'll do this. All that's, I have. That's a, that's a great idea, John. I'll do the same. I'll post a link to the student presentations from last semester. We do have another question here. Uh, it says, can you discuss a bit more about what specifically we need permission for from our organization? Did you say you would not need to see the data itself, just the insights? 
Um, I need to see, uh, you know, you need some level of the predictive model and identify the results, right? I need some level of the results. I'm not looking for the specific transaction. I'm not looking for the PII if it's, you know, a financial or a um, hospital type environment. But I do need to see enough of the aggregate data to know that you've done uh, the requirements. So I need to see the predictive model. Uh, but I don't need to uh, share it with anybody else. I mean, you somewhat have to share enough of it in your presentation to your group. Um, the You would know more about your individual organization, about what you can share or what you can't. If you have a question, you should talk to your supervisor. Uh, typically, you know, the government's I work for the government. It's not a fan of you doing a project and sharing it without getting approval. And so that's the context I have. I would have to get approval from my supervisor. If it had PII, it would be a, a no-no, right? Uh, but there's other pro data items that they don't want shared as well. In my case, if it's public domain, that's fine. Um, but they still want to know if I used it for a class. Um, Dr. Kinode, have you, besides the two that we've had where the students went to their legal and they said no, um, they both felt they had to ask permission because it was going to affect their, um, you know, it was market research for one of them and they were going to give out enough, too much information about how they were going to do their market blitz. Uh, do you yeah, have any examples? I, you know, I had a student who uh, uh, they were. Uh, it was a, a charitable organization that wanted some uh, uh, insights on the data and be able to predict who might give more money and so forth. And they were quite willing to share the data, so we we did do that. Or I, the student did that. I just <laughs> supervised and enjoyed reading it. Uh, I also had a student. I think I had somebody working for the post office that did something. We've had three or four. I'm trying to remember. You know, it's such an ideal opportunity if your organization says, gee, I wish we could afford to hire somebody to do thus and so in the world of predictive analytics or analytics, and here you sit looking for a project that it's, it's, it's a shame if you can't work that out, and we try to do that if possible. So, you know, sometimes you have to disguise a little bit of the data. That's probably okay within limits. Again, those are things that Dr. McKeeby and I can take under consideration but you certainly would need permission. You'd have to go to your organization and say, remember, you always wanted somebody to do thus and so? Well, I'll do that for you. But I've got to at least show it to the professor uh, or at least, you know, some aspects of it. So, you know, that's negotiable to a degree. Uh, as far as the data sets go, uh, Dr. McKeeby made some good points. Um, you, you're not going to get away with picking a data set that's, you know, exactly 10,000 rows, has no missing data, uh, no outliers, et cetera, et cetera. You know, the things from uh, many of the things from UCI and others are just too structured and been used too many times. So you need to challenge yourself with your data set. You need to find something. Again, a lot of good stuff out there at Kaggle. Uh, some of the big ML stuff is good, and, but there are many, many other sources of data, and we've listed quite a few of them in the classrooms. The, the key thing is, you know, if you want to really uh, learn something, you need to take on a fairly robust data set. Now, maybe 100 million rows is too much, <laughs> but uh, I have had students. I have had students take on data sets that were a million rows. Now, I'm not. I'm not suggesting you do that, because sometimes that's that's pretty messy. But you know, you want to have a, a really interesting data set. And so we will give you feedback if we think uh, that your data set needs a little tempering down or tamping up, either way. So um, take a look. Don't don't try to close your options off in the first day of the course. You've got two weeks to do this first uh, assignment, the scope, and so you ought to consider more than one alternative unless you've really got a good one for sure that you're ready to go on. So, so you know, diverge a little bit early in the process. Take on some ideas. Go out and look at as many data sets as you can. Think about as many ideas as you can. If there's if there's a possibility working for your organization, that's great. If you're interested in one of the special projects, let me know, and uh, and and then you can get your closure in, in before the end of week two in terms of its scope. Okay. So I have had people use their organization in 
in idea, creating the model and everything and using, uh, but not using data from the organization. So kind of mocking up data to show how they would use it for the organization and then presented it back to the organization as this is what I can do with uh, the data set from the organization. So they were still able to do the capstone project for us, but also help their work effort. So that was good. Uh, I've, and I've had a case where actually uh, they didn't identify the organization so the other students wouldn't know it, and so they didn't tell that, but use data from the organization. But still, we want you to get approval from the organization because they might feel it's proprietary. Um, or they, we don't want you to get in trouble through us, right? So uh, that's important. That's all I have as well. I will, uh, let me share my screen briefly. This is a, we're working on a spreadsheet of projects that um, students have done, okay? So here's one, I hope you can see my screen. It says United States Probation and Pretrial Service. They used analytics, they used real data. Let me get my, drag this thing out of the way. Uh, National Hospital Ambulatory Medical Care Survey used analytics to develop strategies. Department of Defense, a couple of those. Predictive model to build a fraud detection system. That was a real. These were real projects in our in our program. Data 670. We haven't kept it up to date for the last semester. Crescent City Charter Schools. Uh, they use data to. Uh, let's see what it says here. Let me scroll over. Oh yeah, similar to what we're we're asking people to do, sort of with the uh, Informs project. Okay. And so you can see we've had several. Here's one of the NASA. Here's the Illinois State of Board. Uh, Illinois State Board of Education. I think that might have been an air project, and Delaware's Department of Transportation. So they they um, have been some very interesting ones, and this is a little bit outdated because there were three or four last semester, I think, that need to be added to that. So that's just a, yep. a an example of some of the things that were done real world. And of course, the, not everybody can do real world. We understand that. As, as I said, it's 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 a, it's too bad because it's an ideal opportunity. Here you are with some some need to uh, use your labor for productively and organizations need people to do things. So if you can if you can work that out, match it up, it's win-win, I think, but it doesn't always work out that way. So we have other options. So don't don't be alarmed if you can't do that. All right. Um, any last questions? This is one of the more interesting slash fun slash enjoyable courses, I think, in the program. It's your chance to do your own thing within limits. And both Dr. McKeeby and I, I know I get a big kick out of seeing the many, oh. many different kinds of things that you all do with these projects. So it's always very interesting for me. Uh, a lot of yeah. work because, again, instead of keeping everybody on one track working on one assignment to do one kind of thing like I do in Data 640, and, and in data 610, I have a herd of cats. I have people going in all directions, and the idea is to keep the cats all moving in the same direction, at least in general, even though they're on specific uh, tracks, okay? But it's fun. It's enjoyable. Okay, uh, I guess I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording. We've gone as far as we can with that. Give me a second. <laughs>